Today's devotional, we are continuing in our series focusing on mind wars. And I really love this series because I feel like it's so applicable to all of us. We all at times struggle with thoughts. We all at times struggle with how to change our thoughts, how to stop from spiraling in our thoughts. And today's verses are uh, a powerful reminder that when we humbly come to God, he will not only receive us, but he will help us and lift us up. Our passage today is from James chapter four. And the verses are 7 through 10. And it says this, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you. Up. Now, in this chapter, James is uh, addressing the church and he is talking about division and contention in the church. And earlier it's saying, well, you know, it's, it's examining the reasons why we fight and quarrel. A lot of the time it's because of sin. It's because we're jealous. We want something that somebody else has. Uh, in verse two, it says you, didn't, you desire but do not have. So you kill, you covet because you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. And so here, even though people probably weren't literally killing each other, they probably were with their thoughts in their minds. And uh, in Jesus, in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, it talks about, you know, when you think certain thoughts, you may as well have been doing the actions because God sees those thoughts and he holds you accountable for those thoughts. And so for some of us, we, we can struggle with some uh, dark thoughts or just thoughts that are sinful, frankly, that we, we get envious and we get um, desirous of other things that, are, that other people may have. And we wonder, what, why isn't God fair and why don't I have certain things? And, and, and what James is talking about here is to really change, change your mindset, like to submit to God. And then he says this, to wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. You see, we can say with our lips how much we trust God and surrender our lives to God, but in our thought life, is that true? I want to read this same passage again in the message. And it says this, so let God work his will in you. Yell aloud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. And I really, I love the way it says that because it, it gives us a pathway. When we're struggling with sin or sinful thoughts, we, we, it tells us what to do. It says, let God work in you, right? Say a loud no to the devil. So if you are caught in some kind of sin right now, if you're struggling with some kind of sin, whether it's here or already in action, tell the, tell the devil no. A no to him, a no to the world's ways, a no to selfishness and self-absorption and a yes to God. And that we cleanse our minds. We ask God, search me and know my heart and show me if there's anything within that is not of you and help me to get rid of it. It says, quit dabbling in sin, purify your inner life, quit playing the field. And then it says this, hit bottom and cry your eyes out. I have hit bottom in my life and I have cried my eyes out. There was literally a day when finally the full weight or a full enough realization of the weight of my sin that I had done really hit me. And, and I just couldn't stop crying. I cried for literally hours and hours. As I, as I understood the, the pain and the damage and the consequences of the things that I had, had caused. And so in that moment, I knew that as I was crying, I was not alone, that I could turn to God, that he would help me. And in my desire for need, for comfort, when I turned to him and I said, help, he said, I am here. 
and that is the same for you when you get to that lowest point and i pray you don't have to get there but if and when you do that bottom can actually be a gift because it can be an opportunity then for God to work in you, to transform you, to rebuild, to purify that inner life, to purify that heart, to take away the double-mindedness and set your eyes, fixing your eyes on Jesus and let him then lift you up out of your circumstances. Let him then move you from bottom upwards. Too many times our pride gets in the way. Too many times our selfishness or self-absorption gets in the way. We want because we have lost our attitude for gratitude. And so it all begins in the mind. And so what today can we, can we hand back over to God? What today do we need to say no to and instead turn and surrender to God? What do we need to ask him for for forgiveness? What is it that is, is hindering our pure minds, our pure hearts? So as we think about today, just remember the words of James. At the, finally, it says, get on, down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. If you are struggling today, then very practically, I would encourage you to get on your knees and allow God to then lift you to your feet. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for your word. It is sometimes quite harsh, but I'm grateful for its truth. I'm grateful for the way that it penetrates, that it cuts between joint and marrow, that it is a living word. And so I pray that you would come right now, Holy Spirit, and that you would show us as we wait on you, as we listen to you, help us to see any area in our life that you want to remove, any area in our life that you want for us to confess, that you want for us to surrender to you. And I pray as we get on our knees and we ask for your forgiveness, we thank you in advance that in our humility, you will then lift us up. We love you and we are so grateful for your incredible love for us. So help us now as we take some time just to listen to you and examine our hearts together with you, examine our minds together with you and show us God what we need to change. In Jesus name I pray, amen. Have a great day.